Today we're going to transform the default Mac terminal to the pimped out, drop down, quick style, fast and functional console that is going to be always there regardless of wherever you are on your Mac. Kind of like this one. For those of you who are new to the channel, my name is Daniel, I'm a data scientist and here I share my experience and tips and tricks around programming. Now let's get into it. Setting up a terminal is the first thing that any software engineer needs to do on a new machine. And here I've got a brand new M2 MacBook Air. Nothing is configured, so we'll do everything together from scratch. Quick announcement before we proceed. I want to let you know that I'm running a $100 Amazon gift card giveaway for my subscribers. As of today, I only have about 1200 subscribers on my channel, which makes your chances of winning relatively high, especially comparing to just about any other channel that runs giveaways among their hundreds of thousands of subscribers. The rules are simple. All you need to do is watch this video till the end, subscribe to my channel, drop a like and a comment down below letting me know which other Mac tips you would like me to cover in my next videos. Now back to the show. I've structured all the commands we're going to be using today in a dedicated GitHub repo, so the link is going to be below. Before we'll get into the terminal setup, we're going to need a decent text editor, so step 0 is going to be installing VS Code on your machine. Ok, now that we've got a VS Code installed, we need to create a zhrc file in our home directory. So when the terminal launches, it will run all the commands from the zhrc file, which will help configure your command line the way we are going to configure it today. So just look into your home directory and make sure you are displaying the hidden files. As you can see there is no zhrc file in here so that means we need to create one and you can do this really easily just by using a touch command. Okay you can see that this file is empty right now and let's just keep it in here for now. Next thing to do is install Xcode and Homebrew. The first is a set of Apple developer tools which is required for programming and the second as they say is a missing package manager for macOS and Linux systems. It's just a convenient way of installing third-party packages onto your machine. So open terminal and run this command xcode select install. This might take some time depending on your internet connection. And now we need to install homebrew and I have two sets of commands here for ARM Max and Intel Max. Since we are running ARM we need to use this code block here. So let's enter the downloads folder, create a homebrew directory here and download homebrew into this directory using this command right here. Now we need to move the download of homebrew into the specific directory on your machine using this command. And now in order to be able to use homebrew right now we need to export its path. This is a temporary solution so just don't bother, just copy and paste this link here. Ok, next up is installing iTerm2 onto your machine and this is just an alternative to the built-in terminal. It's far more configurable and we're gonna need all those configuration options in order to set it up the way we want it to be. It's real easy, we're gonna use homebrew, copy and paste this command into your terminal and here you have it being downloaded. Ok, now we have iTerm2 installed and let's just launch this instead of the default terminal. So in order to start configuration we need to install all my ZSH team. Uh, it's just a theme for the terminal which will make it look much nicer. It's this command right here, copy and paste it. And while this is happening let's look into our ZSH RC file. As you can see this is populated with all the necessary commands that are going to be run whenever you launch any terminal and they will apply the styling effects onto your terminal. And you can see right away that your iTerm2 window has changed. The next step to do is to configure the path for homebrew in the uh, zshrc file. And you remember when we have installed homebrew, we've run this command at the end so that homebrew would be available within our terminal. Now, once we add this into the zshrc file, this will happen automatically every time you launch terminal and you're not going to have to run this command within the terminal. And uh, there are two different paths for Intel base Max and for ARM Max. We're going to use this path here and we just copy this and add this at the end of our zshrc file. Before I save this, let me give you an example. I'm going to close the terminal as I open iTerm2 once again. If I run brew command here, it's not going to find it because the path has not been specified. So after I save this and I relaunch iTerm once again, you're gonna see that the brew command is recognized. With this out of the way, we need to install a custom font. And uh, in your browser, you can just follow this link and download the font from here. Open font book and copy your downloaded font into your phone book. 
and that's it. Your font is going to be already on your machine and you can use it in Microsoft Word, in any text editor or in the terminal as we need it. Okay, the next step is to install Powerline 10K theme and this theme will help us configure iTerm2 just to display the, all the information that we need in a more convenient way. Just clone this GitHub repo. If you don't have Git installed, then you're going to need to use Brew to install Git. So from now on, we're going to be working with iTerm2 settings. First thing to do is to delete the default profile. So we go to iTerm2 settings, into the profiles, we'll create a new profile, set it as default and delete the default profile altogether. Okay, very good. We have our custom profile. So now we want to configure colors. And I have a configuration file in this repository here. It's called Daniel iTerm colors and you can call it whatever you want. Copy the contents of this file. With VS Code, I'm going to create a new file. I'll call this, since the user of this machine is Julia, I'm going to call this Julia iTerm colors. And I'll just paste all the contents of what I've just copied into this file. And make sure to save this into your home directory. Now we need to apply these colors. Now back to our settings. We're going to go to profiles, colors, color presets and we need to import the new color preset that we have just downloaded. So uh, all you need to do is find this file that you have saved into your home directory and open it. And after this has been installed, now you need to apply this color preset. So right here we'll select Julia and this is going to be applied to your current terminal. All the colors are going to be the way they have been set up in that file. Okay, now we need to configure fonts. Remember, we've downloaded a custom font. We go back to Settings, Profiles, Text, Font. And here we need to search for the source code Pro Powerline. And here it is. And uh, I usually like to increase the font size to 14. And we need to also check this box here, Use Ligatures. Next thing to do is to configure status bar. Status bar is something that is going to be displayed in your terminal and is going to show you whatever you configure it to display. In the settings, in the profiles, we go to session window and uh, we're going to check status bar enabled. And after that, we'll configure this status bar. So down here, you can just drop anything you want your status bar to display. I usually go with CPU and uh, RAM usage. So it's going to dynamically show to you how much CPU or RAM you're using currently with this terminal session. In the color setting here, I like to use light colors. In the advanced, we're going to configure the background color for our status bar. So I usually use a color picker and use the same color as the background of my terminal. Okay, that's it. Click OK and you can see the status bar right here and uh, I prefer it to be down below so the next thing is we need to change the appearance of the status bar. Go back to settings and appearance, change the status bar location to the bottom and you can see it's right down here. We're using 15% of our CPU currently and 15 gigabytes of RAM. Okay, so now we need to apply the power level 10k theme and it's going to change everything that we see in the terminal dramatically. We need to open our configuration zshrc file. We are just going to go to the very top, it's right here. And we'll just replace this by our new theme that we have downloaded. Save. Now we need to restart the terminal for the changes to take place. And we can either close it and open it once again, or you can just source this zshrc file from the current session. So use the source command. Right away we have the, the power level 10k theme configuration launched. There are quite a few settings you will have to go through to configure this. And I have outlined all my settings down here. So if you like the look and feel that I have, just follow these guidelines. Uh, basically this is very simple. You just follow the instructions here. So do you want to install this other font? No, we don't. We have our own font. So let's say no. And here you just go logically and answer the questions like, does this look like a diamond to you? Yes, it does. Uh, does this look like a lock? No, it doesn't. Uh, does this look like a lock? Yes, it does. And does this look like a Python logo? No, it does not. Uh, do all these icons fit between the crosses? And we can see that they don't. Some of them overlap and we can just say no. Now on to the configurations. The first one will go with rainbow. And then Unicode, I want 24 hour format and I want angled other than vertical. So next one is going to be sharp. 
then flat, one line, compact, many icons, uh, concise, yes for the transistor prompts because it's gonna just look much cleaner than, than this right here, verbose, and yes I want to override the default p10kzsh file in order to save these settings. And you can always rerun this configuration just by running the p10k configure command and it will launch this wizard once again for you. Next thing is plugins for terminal. The first one is going to be auto suggestions plugin. What it's going to do is it will help you auto complete what you are typing using the tap command. So if I try to run the source command which I ran previously, it will not going to provide to me any suggestions. But after we'll uh, install this plugin, uh, let me show you what is going to happen. So clone this repository. Within your zshrc file you need to specify this plugin. We just need to add it here into this variable. And the way to do this is just to copy and paste the name of the plugin and without any commas just add it right here. Alright, this is done and let's just check it out. As I try to run any command that I've run before, as you can see it provides me auto suggestions and I can either use tab or I can just use the right error to accept the whole suggestion that, that it provides. Okay, the next plugin is Syntax Highlighting. So let's clone the repository for the Syntax Highlighting plugin onto our machine and add this plugin into our plugins variable in the zshrc file. As you can see right here, I'm typing the command source once again. It has been recognized as a system command and you can see the syntax highlighting here. And this is going to come in very handy when you're going to be using different commands like cd for instance or ll command that is going to show you your whole directory. Okay, the other very neat command is a web search. So you're doing something within your terminal and you don't know how to use one of the commands and you just want to google it. One way to do this is just go inside your browser and just google it. The other way to do it is you can do this right from the terminal. So this plugin does not need to be downloaded. Just add this name of the plugin into your plugins variable, Google Apple. And it's just gonna use the Google search engine to find whatever you're looking for. And if you have a few words that you want to Google, like a sentence, then you need to encapsulate this into the columns. So Google Apple computers. Okay, so as you can see, it has Googled everything for you, just like you asked it. Now, the next thing we want to do is to configure the drop-down Quake style mode. First, we'll configure the shortcut for that. Let's go to iTerm to settings, and keys right here, and hotkey. Create a dedicated hotkey window. We want to add a hotkey. The one I'm using is control tilde. And down below, you want to check floating window. By running this control tell the command you, you can see that you have an iTerm window pop down uh, and, but this is not properly configured yet. Further setup is to go into iTerm2 settings once again, profiles, window, in the space drop down menu select all spaces and in the screen drop down menu select screen with cursor and check height after opening. In the profiles you can see this new profile hotkey window here we can configure the transparency. For instance, right now it is very transparent and you can see all the text beneath the terminal window which kind of disturbs whatever you're looking at. Make sure that use transparency is selected and the transparency value I use is 5. Now you can see this is much less transparent and it's much more clear to see the commands you input into the terminal. The last thing to do is open iTerm2 and hide it at computer startup and then you can use your shortcut to pull it down. With Spotlight you need to find login items and here we want to add iTerm2 for a cleaner look of your overall system. Since you have it running all the time in the background, you might not want to have this icon here in your dock and in your tab switcher menu. So to do this, go in back into your iTerm2 settings and then to appearance and check the exclude from dock and tap application switcher. And as you can see, you don't have it down here in the dock while it is running in the background and you can be anywhere on your machine and just pull it down and do whatever you want and then hide it back. So whatever you're doing, you know that your terminal is just one click away. You might notice that right now, since you don't have iTerm here in the dock, you don't have the settings here. So if you want to configure any settings, and this is true for any application on a Mac, just whenever you have the iTerm2 window opened, hit the command plus comma, and it will open the settings for you. Now, the last thing we want to take care of is the VAS code settings, uh, because it has its own built-in terminal. 
And as I mentioned, all the changes that we apply to the ZSHRC file are going to be used by any terminal ran on your machine. If in VS Code will launch terminal, you can see that just about everything is applied, but it does not see the custom font that we have installed. All we need to do is go into the VS Code settings and here in the search bar, this is what you want to search for. And just copy this name of the phone that we have installed and make sure to use close. So just copy the whole thing and paste this in here into this field. And now you have your VS Code terminal just the same way you have configured your iTerm2 terminal. Last thing we want to do is configure the ability to launch VS Code from the command line. Copy this code right here and paste it into your ZSHRC file at the very bottom or anywhere really. Let's say we want to go to downloads and open VS Code there. So code and here you go. You've opened your VS Code in the downloads folder or say you want to create a new file in VS Code using the terminal command. So let's say code new file.py created this new file there is a name and you can just click save and it will get saved to the current directory where your vs code is opened with having terminal set up the way you like it you will have fulfilled the first required step for any software engineering activity whatever happens next will be done using the command line you truly enjoy thanks for watching and see you on the next one